Team Keep It Clean. Ooh, it feels good to say that again. I feel like I ain't seen y'all in such a long time. But what's going on? St. Graven here with another video. And in this video, Raven's schedule is looking spicy. Spicy. But I know, like, when you think about it, no matter how the schedule looked, we were all going to get hyped over it. We were all going to get excited about it. No matter what game was where, when we played this team, that team, night game, 1 p.m. game, 4 p.m. game, overseas game. Remember the last time how that went. But no matter how the schedule looked, we were going to get excited over it because it's official now. Even though, something to keep in mind, these games are subject to change. Because, you know, with flex scheduling and all that, and then especially with the last game of the season, y'all know how that goes already. But anyway, let's look at this schedule together. I know y'all looked at it on Thursday and whatnot, but let's take a look at it together. Team Keep It Clean style. So, week one, we starting off with the Texans. The Texans, 1 p.m. game week one, where we get to go against a young rookie quarterback. And if Chris, I think Chris Moore is still there, too. So a little Ravens revenge game, possibly. Now, I expect Ravens to take care of business, but, you know, Chris Moore, gonna be, if, if he's still with the Texans, he's going to be giving it his all. But shout out to Tank Dale, because I know a lot of Ravens fans wanted him, too. But he's right there with the Texans. Uh, then week two. Hey, week two, it's like, hey, they, they getting it started right away, man, with them Bengals. And, you know, Bengals, like, they are going to present a challenge every single time the Baltimore Ravens play them. Now, this week two game, there should be, like, especially with it being early in the season, Ravens should be, and hopefully both teams, or hopefully every team in the league is, but Ravens should be pretty full goal. Bengals should be pretty full goal. But this, like, this game, this is going to be the battle of all the trash talking because, as y'all know, y'all see it all the time, the trash talk, especially on Twitter between Bengals and Ravens fans. Ooh, I stay out of it. I just watch it from afar. I watch it from a distance and whatnot. I'll be laughing at some stuff. I'll be like, ooh, man, he got him there. But I stay out of it. But you know, you know that trash talk is going to be crazy, man. But uh, that, that should be a, a good, tough game uh, between the Bengals and the Ravens. And that's an away game. So Ravens got home, uh, then away. So then, uh, week three, they back at the crib to play the Cleveland Browns. I almost didn't know what team that was because they ain't had no logo on the helmet. But, oh, no, wait a minute, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. That's week four. See, I'm looking at it the wrong way. Week three is the Colts. So excuse me. Sorry, Browns. We'll talk about y'all next. But week three is the Colts at the crib. So, again, another young quarterback uh, because they're going to be going possibly, most likely, against Anthony Richardson. I mean... You ain't taking somebody that high overall. Was he number four overall, I think? And going to be sitting him on the bench? I don't think so. But you never know. But you probably know. He'll probably be playing. So that should be fun, man. And that'll be at the crib. Um, then the following week, then you play against the Cleveland Browns. Because, again, it, just, it was just a blank helmet. I'm like, man, who is that? But, yeah, it's, it's, it's Cleveland. Um, but you play Cleveland in Cleveland. Cleveland already gave the Ravens trouble. They are, I mean, it's a division game. So these are guys that you play at least two times per year. Obviously, the Bengals last year, you played them three times. But division games, you played them at least twice a year. So they know you. And now they already had Miles Garrett. He, he loved giving the Ravens trouble. Now they got uh, Zadarius Smith, too. <laughs> that was Zadarius, but just doing a, a world tour, huh? Started with the Ravens, went to the Packers, went to the Vikings. Looked like he was going to the Ravens <laughs> But now, hey, he in Cleveland, so that, that should make that matchup that much more special. And then uh, they stay on the road. They head to Pittsburgh. And with Pittsburgh, I mean, you don't even know what to expect from Pittsburgh because they, they got Allen Robinson. I feel like he's sort of a Chase Claypool replacement. Um, they got Najee Harris. Can he pick it? Uh, he's a bit up and down. I still just feel like he's trying to find himself in the league. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's still Pittsburgh, though. It's Pittsburgh. When they play against the Baltimore Ravens, they're a well-coached team. Uh, they, they do what they got to do. They bring it. They bring it. Um, that's why when the last time we saw a sweep from either side, I don't even remember. And y'all correct me on it. I don't remember when it's been. I feel like it's been a while, but I could be right. But I don't remember. But anyway, uh, you know, Pittsburgh going to bring it per usual another division game. Uh, then week six, where we fly overseas. Now, Ravens, we, we knew a London game was coming eventually. 
we knew it was going to happen eventually because it had been a long time. It had been a really long time since the Ravens got dog walked, annihilated, slapped in the face since they got punched in the mouth and didn't get up against the Jaguars back whenever that was years ago. But Ravens hadn't been over there since. So we, we knew it was coming eventually. Because you, you can't escape from these London games. If they ain't get you yet, they're going to get you soon enough. But I'm happy for all the fans over there because they're going to get to get an experience that, especially all the Ravens fans, they're going to get to see their team up close and personal. They're like, that's different, man. It's different. So that game will be bright and early. For us on the East Coast, it'll be at 9.30 a.m. For those on the West Coast, it'll be at 6.30 in the morning. So, <laughs> but yeah, they're going up against the Titans over there. So that should be fun. I've I seen a lot of Ravens fans really scared. Really scared about that game. And I think more so it's the PTSD from the Jaguars just beating the Ravens down. And with that Jaguars game, it was like one of them games where you just felt like, all right, Jaguars, they got out to early lead. Okay, cool. Oh, okay, that, that lead got extended. Okay, cool. Ravens going to do something. Oh, the Jaguars lead got extended again. Oh, okay, Ravens going And it just kept getting worse. It kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. It was so bad, as y'all remember. Um, but, yeah, that should be fun. Then they come back to the crib, and they play the Detroit Lions. They play the Lions. So Matthew Staff, no, Jared Goff. I got him mixed up with his old team, Jared Goff. Um, and I think they signed somebody else at QB, too, but I don't remember. I know they drafted Hendon Hooker, but this is sort of a red shirt year for him as he recovers from his injury. So in and, and Lions games, as we remember, they, they always keep it interesting. Remember the kick? Remember that kick in week three? The Justin Tucker, the historic kick. But anyway, uh, then the Cardinals. Ooh. Oh, and it's in Arizona, too? That should be a fun one. That game is week eight. Week eight. Um, I, I expect, and I know it's still super early, but I expect that to be one of the Ravens' pettiest games of the year. And I expect them to just try to go all out with scoring. I expect them to try to run it up. I expect Lamar to throw for like five, six touchdowns that game and maybe run for one or two. I, I, I just expect them to go crazy. Reason being, I didn't see many of the previews because I ain't have good reception. But I didn't see many of the, the, the schedule previews from the teams. You know how a lot of them put together those super creative videos? I didn't see many. But I did see what the Cardinals put for this game. And they called Lamar running back. I said, ooh, yeah, oh, yeah. Because the thing with Lamar, he ain't going to say nothing. He ain't going to publicly acknowledge it or whatever. I'm sure it's going to come up in, 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 a, uh, in a press or something before the game. Blah, 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 blah. He ain't going to say, oh, no, nah, I, I ain't worried about that. But he sees all of that stuff. And I'm sure he'd be, he'd be a little extra motivated. With that game, it, 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 it should be something special. Then, then Hollywood, this would be the Hollywood versus the Ravens. Like a real game this time because they, they played each other in a preseason last year, but that's a preseason. So anyway, um, that should be a good one. Then you stay in the NFC West the following week at the crib and you play uh, the Seahawks. So Seahawks going against Geno Smith. So we get to see Geno Smith versus Geno Stone. Two names that always get mixed up. My apologies. Um, but the Ravens secondary. DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf, um, Tyler Lockett, and oh, the receiver that so many Ravens fans wanted. Oh, is it Naj Najigba? I think that's him. But anyway, um, so that should be another fun. I mean, the whole season is going to be fun. It's, it's football season. Of course it's fun. Um, then we play the Cleveland Browns again, uh, another 1 p.m. game. Uh, then week 11, and you know they had to do this, man. They, they had to do this. Week 11 against the Bengals at the crib. It's Sunday Night Football. It's Sunday Night Football, 8.15 p.m. that week. Oh, excuse me, Thursday Night Football. See, man, I'm, I'm all over the place right now. But it's Thursday Night Football. Sorry, the print is like really, really small right here. But anyway, um, it's, it's Thursday Night Football against the Bengals, prime time. So that, that should be good as it always is. Uh, then the following week. Uh, well, actually, 10 days later, because, yeah, you get that 10-day ten day break, uh, they play the Chargers. Now, that's Sunday night football against the Chargers. So two primetime games in a row, one Thursday night, then 10 days later, it's on Sunday night. So you get a nice, long break. Now, that is an away game, but still, hopefully it'll go like that last time they played the Chargers in L.A. 
And that was a beautiful game. That's when Mark Andrews broke for that long win. And I know that was before the playoff game, but the playoff game was in Baltimore. But anyway, hopefully that goes like that. Uh, then week 13 is the bye week. Usually they had a bye week. Um, usually they, had, they have it around the early November. Because I'm so used to uh, when it's me and my wife's anniversary, our wedding anniversary. Uh, that's you because our wedding anniversary is November 3rd. That's usually when they always had a bye week around them. But this year things are different. So that's cool. Um, then week 14, they play the Rams at the crib. Uh, oh, could be a little petty game. Uh, little Odell Beckham Jr. Get a little extra motivation going against his old squad or what now. But yeah, Jalen Ramsey ain't there no more though. But the Ravens will still see Jalen Ramsey later on. Um, then week 15 in Jacksonville. Sunday Night Football against the Jaguars. That should be a really one. Because them, them Jaguars, hey, like even the game last year against the Jaguars was great. I mean, we hated the ending. At least we did. I know Jaguars fans, they loved it. But the game was a great game. It was one of the Ravens let slip away. But it was, it was still a great game nonetheless. So I expect it to be even better this year. Hopefully with the right outcome, though. So we'll see. Uh, then week 16 on December 25th, Monday Night Football. They play the San Francisco 49ers, and you know they're they always going to present a tough task to these Baltimore Ravens because they've just been one of the better coach teams in the league over the past couple of years. For a while, actually, but certainly over the past couple of years. NFC Championship after NFC Championship and whatnot. Now, last year they were in it, but then they started dealing with super injuries, and they, they, they just couldn't overcome all the injuries that they had. It was just, it was a wrap, man. You can only do so much when you're faced with injuries. Hey, 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 us Ravens fans, we know better than anybody. Uh, but that should be a fun one. I remember last time the um, the Ravens played the 49ers on a holiday game. I was actually there when they played the uh, the 49ers on a thanks Thanksgiving game. It was the year that Terrell Suggs won Defensive Player of the Year. So, and that was a defensive game. Anyway, moving on. One of my favorite games of the season. Always, every year, Ravens playing the Miami Dolphins. I, I wish the game was down here, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, and this is the last game of the... Calendar year, not the football year, but the calendar year, because it's on December 31st, and that game is a home game for the Ravens. I mean, even if they would have came down here, you know, the Florida Ravens. Now we got Zay Flowers. So anyway, that game is at M&T Bank Stadium against the Miami Dolphins. Now, right now, it's at 1 o'clock. Depending on how things are with both teams, it could change. And I think uh, week 12, week 12 is the week, so right before the Ravens have a bye week. Um, but week 12, they got Sunday Night Football against the Chargers. So any, any of the games starting at week 12 can be changed, any of them. So I would expect that Ravens, um, that Ravens Chargers game to remain. But after that, the Rams, the Jaguars, the Jaguars are probably going to stay. Uh, but the oh, 49ers, that's probably going to stay too. But any of those games could change. But Ra Ravens got some pretty good slots after the bye week, both before and after, especially with prime time and whatnot. But they could add another one. We'll see. Uh, so week 17 is against the Miami Dolphins. And then week 18 is against the Steelers to close out the season. And it's, it's usually against. That, that's how the NFL does. They, they make the last game of the season. It's always a division game. Always a division game. Uh, so I would expect the Bengals. I haven't looked at any other schedules, but I would expect the Bengals to go against the Browns that game. Um, and just all, it's all division games. So that, that's how that is. So, yeah, that is uh, – the season that is the schedule. Um, I guess you know what I, I guess we do a little record prediction, whatever. Um, if healthy, if healthy. Um, I know when when talking to my guy Nitro, I said uh, fifteen and two if healthy. If they got another corner, they got another corner now. Um, if healthy, I, I gotta I gotta add in another loss. Because I know these Ravens, like, again, there's always, like, two to three games where it's like, oh, what was that? And, and hey, shout out to other teams, too, because the Ravens ain't the only team that showed the play. It's the other team, too. So there are going to be some games where the other teams are better than the Ravens that day. If something just happens where the ball bounces a certain way, y'all know how it goes. So I, while I would love perfection from these Baltimore Ravens, I don't expect perfection from these Baltimore Ravens because they are not perfect. They make mistakes. They're going to make hiccups. They're going to have bumps in the road. It happens. So, um, I mean, not even really based on the schedule or anything, but my little record prediction for these Baltimore Ravens for the 2023 football season with 17 games, I am going to go 
with a, a high of I feel like a high. I'm, I'm I'm debating on a high between 14 and three and 15 and two. That's a high though, a high. A lo- and all this is dependent on health. But a low, if this team is healthy, I think a very very a low low for them will be 12 and five. I actually think a low for them healthy is 13 and four. I really do. I think it's 13 and four. Um, reasons again, health. Health is huge. If you have Lamar Jackson, you got a chance in any single game. And these Ravens, like even before Lamar Jackson too, uh, with, with John Harbaugh, um, even if a team, their team is decimated, one thing that he, he does, he does well, is keep the Ravens in the game. Now, he don't always win the games, but he keeps the Ravens in the games. Um, the Ravens are a team that they don't get blown out too often. It just does not happen, even with injuries and stuff. But again, with health, like I said, high 15, 2, 14, and 3, low, low 12 and 5, but a low, I say 13 and 4. Um, I think they can do really, really well if they're healthy, um, especially on offense with, and in this new offense too. Now, it may take them a little time to get acclimated and adjust and whatnot to this new offense, but once they start rolling, I really think these Ravens could be something special, man. I, I, I really do. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. healthy Odell Beckham Jr. healthy Rashad Bateman uh, New Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews Can't forget about him Likely still there um, Devin Duvernay still Nelson Aguilar J.K. Dobbins healthy Gus Edwards healthy uh, Whatever other running backs End up making the team I know a lot of people How on Mitchell We're we going to see The healthy offensive line Ronnie Stanley going to the offseason Health so much is about health. And, and, I mean, you can say that about any NFL team. A lot of times it's not even who the best team is left, but who the healthiest team left is. So with health, that's where I would put these Baltimore Ravens. So I really, I really do have high hopes for them uh, this year. Um, much more than I did going into last season because a lot of things are different. A lot of things have been changed. A lot of things have been adjusted, and we'll see. Uh, what type of impact those changes have on the team. But I think there's going to be a lot of positive impact. And I'm not just saying this because we're in the offseason. I'm not just saying this because I am a Ravens fan. No, I'm saying this because I actually really believe the changes that they put in place will have a huge impact and a huge positive impact and impact for the better uh, for this football team. But like we always say, we'll see. We'll see how things go. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I'm happy to be seeing y'all again. And we out.